will not be supporting this bill. Thank you. Visitor Sam Lodowinga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's, uh, it's a privilege for me to stand and speak on this, the second reading of the Child Support Amendment Bill. And, um, Mr Speaker, as Chair of the Select Committee that uh, oversaw the work on this bill, uh, may I thank the Minister, Peter Dunn, um, for the hard work that he's put in and for the constructive assistance that he gave to our committee and also to our committee members. Um, while some here today are voting against the uh, proposed legislation, like the last member, I think it would be fair to say that all members of our committee agreed that the current legislation on the books is outdated that the current legislation required reform, and that's why this, sir, this bill has come before the House. And one of the government's key social objectives, sir, is to ensure that New Zealanders have an equal opportunity to take part in and contribute to our society. And, sir, that includes providing a safety net through which the benefit system uh, is working for those who are unable, for, for various reasons, to support themselves. But, sir, this is not a welfare bill per se. This is a bill, as many have already alluded to this afternoon, that supports the calculation of payments between parents who, for whatever reason, have found themselves in circumstances where they are living apart and where they need to raise a child. And those are unfortunate circumstances, sir, and we've all acknowledged that. But it is for the benefit of those children that the financial responsibilities are divided between the parents in a fair, in an equitable and in a transparent manner. And that's what this bill does, sir. It doesn't provide for child poverty as Mr Rajan Prasad has um, asked for. It doesn't provide for, it's not the silver bullet as Mrs Lawler Taylor has suggested uh, was required in this legislation, but it is a bill which provides for the upkeep and the maintenance uh, of, of relationships and particularly it is for our children to be looked after where those circumstances have broken down. Now, sir, the, um, the contention by Mr Clark in his submission this afternoon that um, we take into account the United Nations um, Convention on Children is misplaced. Sir, it is misplaced because, because we cannot introduce a subjective test in the way that these calculations are performed in order to determine a payment between two parents. It cannot be done in a subjective manner. The, the way that the formula has arisen, and I think most people agree that a, an objective formula is the appropriate uh, mechanism with, within which to allocate resources for the child, the way that that has been conducted and was researched and we looked at the Australian legislation and the way that they approached um, this area of the law, they, we all felt that that was the appropriate mechanism. But to introduce another subjective test to that calculation, in my view, is inappropriate. In my view, um, would complicate a, a simplified bill that has come to this House. So, sir, it is 21 years old. And what has already been acknowledged across this House is that circumstances have changed. We have numerous uh, blended families that are now living in our country and that this is a mechanism from which we can calculate the distribution of child support between, uh, between parents that is efficient and that is transparent. And so that, that, that new, the three sort of changes for um, this bill are that the calculation formula recognises shared care, the income of both parents and new estimates of expenditure for raising children in our country. And um, we did look at the formulas, we looked at the, the way that um, expenditure was, get, was um, calculated and I think the amendments that were made to the bill are uh, suitable and appropriate for our country in 2013 going forward. That doesn't mean, of course, that this bill uh, necessarily future-proofs the bill in terms of, of maybe changing circumstances in the future, but in my view, this bill is appropriate for 2013 going forward in terms of the factors that we need to take into account. 
Secondary changes, of course, to update the scheme took into account key factors such as recognising significant daytime care, relying on parenting orders and agreements. And I th again, I say those are matters which members across this House have agreed upon. And sir, this bill cannot come soon enough. I've had uh, a couple of cases in the last year where if this bill was in place, it would have led to a better outcome for the parents involved in, that, in those two situations. So, sir, I support this bill. I look forward to the committee stage. And, um, you know, certainly it's a bill that, in a very difficult area of the law, we can come together and, dis and decide upon a, an appropriate course going forward. Thank you, sir. Uh, I understand this is not a split call. Sue Moroni, 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.